the Bossy Massage, one of my favorite things in the world, and I came upon it kind of accidentally because I had started asking people how they wanted to be touched, and I found out that a lot of times people didn't know, and they went along with stuff that they didn't really want, and I had done that too, of course. And um, one time a, a woman came in, she'd been seeing me for three or four times, and she was in, you know, she was in decent shape, she was functional and everything, she just wanted to increase her her fun with sexuality. And about a third or fourth session in, I said, okay, we're gonna practice you learning to ask for what you want. So you climb up on the table and get however comfy you want, face up, face down, whatever you want, and then you tell me what to do, and I'll do it. And I won't do anything except exactly what you asked me to do. She said, okay, cool. So she laid down her back, and I sat down on the stool there, and she lay there for 45 minutes, saying nothing. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, am I supposed to do something? You know, she was, wasn't was asleep, I could see her breathing. Oh, well, maybe I should ask her again. I thought, no, I told her, and I need to do what I told her. 45 minutes, and then she said, put your hands on my feet. So I put my hands on her feet. She didn't say rub my feet. She said put your hands on my feet. So I put my hands on her feet and I sat, stood there for about five minutes and then our time was up. And so I took my hands away. She stood up and her, her eyes were watery. She said, oh my God, you have been telling me all this time that I had a choice about how I was touched, but I never knew it until now. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh my goodness. Uh -huh. So she had to have a physical experience in which nothing happened except exactly what she said. And that changed everything for her. She, told, she talked about it for years, how impactful that was. So that got me playing with the format and so the three the bossy massage is what grew out of that and the purpose of it is we talked earlier about how easy it is for us to go along with whatever's being done to us and think that we're supposed to like it we're supposed to adapt ourselves to it and somehow going along with stuff and so it's very easy in an in ordinary massage or any other kind of body work to go along with stuff. And sometimes that's part of, you know, sometimes if I'm getting a massage on a rotator cuff, you know, I am kind of going along with stuff. But in our work, we're teaching people how to notice what they want and ask for what they want. The we're helping people stop going along and start making choices. And we want to make that distinction really, really clear. And so the bossy massage is a practice in slowing down enough so that you notice what you want, you trust it, you value it, and you ask for it. So it tends not to be, it's not the time to like totally bliss out and have really great experiences it's not going to be that it's really an exercise the first time I did it first few times when I was on the table doing this I thought gee this is kind of a lot of work it's not really very fun it's kind of interesting exercise but later when I got on the table and did it again I thought wow this is a luxury like I'm lying there, they've done what I asked, and now I have all the time in the world to notice what I want next. And be completely attuned into if and when and what I do want something else. And give myself all the time in the world to do that. And that time it felt like, wow, this is a luxury. To not be rushing on to the next thing. It's like that, that... The, the bossy massage is an exercise in uh, tuning into myself 
and being true to myself. And that's what it is for the person on the table. So the structure of it is so is pre pretty precise. The structure of it prevents the person on the table from going into allowing and tolerating and enduring because they don't have time. Um, you'll see in a moment. So that's for the receiver. For the giver, you get a chance to notice where and why and am I getting impatient? What am I worried about here? Where am I doing more than was asked for? Where am I making assumptions? Someone says, rub my leg, and I start doing that. I'm making assumptions about what kind of rubbing, top to bottom, bottom to top, which leg, making all kinds of assumptions. So where am I making assumptions about what they actually want? And sometimes it's a real, <clears throat> sometimes it's very revealing for the server to notice, <coughs> wow, I'm so, I, I, I want to do these cool things. Oh, I just know they like that. So it's an exercise in getting yourself out of the way and seeing what happens there for you as the server and gives you a taste of real serving in which it actually is about the receiver. It's not about you. It's not about your cool techniques. It's about the receiver. And so you get a taste of like, oh, this is what serving is. This, it can also be quite rich. All right. So sit here first. Thank you for uh, demoing with us. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice you asking for what you want. And part of that is noticing what it is that you want, which is sometimes the hardest part. So you get comfy however you want. You can lie down, stand up, sit, face, whatever you want. doesn't matter. And you can change any time you want as well. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is you'll tell me how you'd like me to touch you. And I will do that for five or ten seconds. And then I will step back and wait. And then when you decide what you want next, you'll tell me that. And then I'll do that for five or ten seconds. I'll never do anything that you don't specifically ask for. Okay. Are you warm enough? Do you want to cover? Yes. I want a cover. I want to be covered up to this point on my waist. Can we get a, a little, yeah, like that? Yes. Great. So I'm just going to wait. It may look like nothing's happening, but what is actually happening is very important. And that's what's happening inside her. Very important. So I'm just holding this space. as a server in general, if I think that what's important is the cool stuff I'm doing with my hands, I'm going to think that nothing's happening. But when I realize that the important thing is what's happening in her, then all the rest of it makes sense. My, what I'm attending to changes. Instead of my technique, it's what she's learning, what she's experiencing. That's the important thing here. 
it's tough because right now I'm experiencing like this need to just say anything, you know, to just right. tell you to do anything, but I'm not actually clear on what I want. Yeah, beautiful. I'm just having this like uh, almost anxiety over the fact that something's coming and maybe I don't like that it has to come. Yeah. You know, and that's that's a stressor. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. you to lay one of your hands on my upper back between my shoulder blades. Okay. Right there. Um, Is that the spot? Yes. I want you to stand up my head and switch your hand around. Um, like that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel how she just like, oh, yeah. So I'm going to do this for five or ten seconds. Hmm. I want that same touch again, but um, with more pressure downward. Okay. Like that? Yeah. Um, also notice that I'm at, each time I make contact, I'm asking her like this, so to confirm that I have what she, that we're doing what she actually wants. I'm, what I want is to prevent her from going into tolerating anything. And I think you're about to say something. Um, it almost feels like it's, it's, uh, the pressure is pushing, um, mm, pressing down toward the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I want the pressure to press down toward the ground. You want it to press down toward the ground? Yeah. Like that? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing sometimes the tiniest difference, just our body knows just what it wants. Yeah. I want more pressure at the, the base of your hand. Yeah. There? Yes. Yeah. <sighs> It would be possible for me as the giver to concoct all kinds of reasons and implications for why this person wants their hand here or it's this chakra or it's this blah -de blah who does not matter just like forget it it's what she wants that's good enough yeah. I don't need to make up any stories about the implications of this or that Um, did she say for a time frame, or have you just no, decided I, on a time frame? I had told her at the beginning, five to ten seconds, Mac, is how long will be. Okay. And then I step back and wait for the next thing. Okay, and so that time frame yes. has been set. Okay. Yeah, the time frame has been set, five to ten seconds. Okay. Because I want to prevent her from any possibility of falling into that going along with stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just like cut, nicking that one in the bud. That ain't gonna happen. Or we're minimizing the possibility that it can happen. Yeah. You want to say anything about what you're noticing? Um, 
Crystal, just for the learning yeah. purposes? Um, so I noticed um, in the beginning, just like, this can give an emotional release too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of... Um, I noticed a lot of tightness in my core. Uh, and then, and I didn't really notice it until I was getting the touch that I wanted because then I noticed it released. Mm. And um, for me, I feel like it, it brings up a lot of emotion to get what you want, what you're asking for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're really listening, you know? Yeah. And that means a lot. And the patience, especially, um, I notice for me in these exercises, when someone puts their hand on me and they just wait, it's the fact that they're waiting. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. So it means it's for me. Mm. And so, yeah. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. That's what we're going for. Uh, do you want me to just keep going a little longer? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. That word patience is an interesting word. When, when we need patience, it's because what's happening is different than what we wish was happening. We wish this thing is happening. We wish the kids are quiet, for example, and they're noisy. So we need patience, yeah, because we want something different than what is. But if we are happy with what is, patience is not applicable in that situation. So if you find yourself requiring patience to stand here, ask yourself, what is it that I'm wishing was happening? I know that what's happening here is very important, it requires no patience at all. If I wish that I could do my cool tricks, then I'm gonna need patience. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I want um, you to stand at my head mm -hmm. and put both of your hands on my head, mm -hmm. on the sides of my head. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important too, that she doesn't touch me until I'm done. Talk. Yeah, that's really yeah. important. Like, I noticed that in my work is that when someone immediately touches me when I'm not done talking, I feel like, oh, this is no longer for me because they're not listening. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, on both sides of my head, uh, behind my ears, not on top of them, but right uh, behind them. Flat. Like that? With your palms a little bit uh, down toward my ear more? Or uh, Work down the other down way? Down this way? Yeah. You like that? Um, uh, mm, with your hands up higher on my head toward, yeah. I'm gonna get this chair, hold on. Um. Like um, that? With the, yeah, with the palms down even, even lower. Without pressing against the ears though. Ah. Like, like, um. Down lower toward my, my forehead, I guess. Oh wait, I want to turn it back. fingertips um, 
a half on my forehead. Um, uh, facing each other inward. Facing each other inward. Like this? Yeah. Um, I go through these moments of, oh, what, what will they think if I'm not telling her to move her fingers? Like, I just want her hands to rest on me. And sometimes I want the hands to be moving, but right now I don't. And, like, that thought of, is there judgment by the people who are watching me yeah. experience this comes in, and I notice that. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I can do, really, is, is notice it and be with it. Yeah. Um, Anybody else experience this feeling like, uh oh, am I not asking for enough? Um, yeah, yeah, we've all done that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. How often do we give ourselves the space to be that picky? Hmm. Really? That's a beautiful example. Yeah, yeah. I want a hug. <laughs> I want like body pressure on me. Uh, that's how I've been feeling, just like to feel the pressure. Okay. Um, but I don't know if that's possible from this. Sure, why not? I guess, why not? <laughs> I want pressure on my chest and on my arms. So do you, do you want that the hands or do you want a hug? Um, I think I want you to lay on top of me. Sure. With your full pressure on my body. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. Some things are harder to ask for, right? Yeah. Also, it, as the practitioner, if I'm not comfortable doing that, I would just say, well, I'm not comfortable doing that, but how close can we get to something that will work for you? And I'm trusting But, but I'm happy to do that. So yeah. Like this? Um, a little bit further up, up, like maybe. <sighs> a little, a little bit further up, maybe with more, a little more. With that. With a little less weight, so if you held yourself up by your arms, okay. just just the tiniest part. With that. Can I hug you? Is that yes. is that okay? Yes, you may. Yeah. <sighs> so for teaching purposes, I'm going to add a little bit. Okay? okay, yes. So she has been saying, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. Sometimes 
Pete, so she's fairly empowered about it because she's already able to be clear. A lot of times when people start this for the first time, it's very difficult. So they might approach it kind of sideways and saying, well, you could do this, in which case we're not going to let them get away with that. They have to actually ask for what they want instead of what that's okay. Or they might say, would you please maybe do this? And there's nothing wrong with that. We have different habits about how we ask for things, and we often try to make it nicer. You know? So the reason this is called a bossy massage is because I want to gradually move her from where she is into being just a little bit more bossy. So if she starts out saying, well, maybe you could such and such, I'm going to have her go one step further, which is, will you such and such? And those words, will you, can be very vulnerable, which is why we use them. I mean, it's why we are practicing them. So, and then if she gets comfortable saying, will you, um, I'll move her into saying, um, just give me a command, like, do such and such. So we're gonna, wherever she is, we're just gonna stretch a little further, experiment with some things, some ways of saying it will be easy for her, and some ways of saying it will be a little edgy. We're still gonna go to those little edges. So she's been saying, I want you to. So I'm gonna have her experiment with saying, will you? And see how that goes for her. So whatever is the next thing, say, will you? Or I think you did that actually for line on you, didn't I? Did, I, don't I said I said will you for line, yeah, okay. and that's um, in, when I do my practice, I move I move them to uh, saying want. Uh -huh. I don't do the giving a command, so right. I would yeah I would like to try yeah that. So, so giving a yeah giving a command is not the way I recommend living your life. This is an ex this is an experiment in what happens when I am completely confident that I am in charge of what's happening to me. Yeah, so it's a, it's an exercise. It's not the way you should necessarily live your life. And why not? Well, you could. See if it works for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any boundaries for, for, like, is there anything that I can't ask? No, there's nothing you can't ask for. But you'll tell me. I will tell you if I'm a no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed too that when she kind of continued to fine tune what she wanted, um, you gave her the latitude of the other ten seconds for that. Yeah. And the other ten seconds yeah. for that. Yeah. And uh, and you know a little bit made sure she got her hug at the end. Yeah. And sometimes the way I like to do that is just uh, instead of thinking 10 seconds, I'm going to take five breaths here, or three breaths here, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so another way that has been suggested, which I think would be fun to try, is we'll do this for four or five breaths. That would be another way of sort of keeping track of time. Yeah. I noticed I asked you if you had boundaries partially, and after I asked you that, I noticed that I asked in part because I didn't want to make you uncomfortable in anything I was asking. Yeah. I didn't want to ask for anything that you might feel wasn't okay for me to ask for. Interesting. And I noticed that. Anybody ever done that before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yet so broad that question, boundaries, I had no idea. Of course I had boundaries. You know, <laughs> yeah, but uh, where are you going? Which yes. area or whatever? Yeah. And so I might say, well, what did you really have in mind? Well, yeah, working with men, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times I initially set that that boundary mm -hmm. of, you know, we're going to stay outside of the bathing suit area for, mm -hmm. for, for yeah. this exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that can be very helpful as the, as the server to, to state those up front. For example, today I'm going to keep my clothes on and um, so within those boundaries we're fine. Or it may be... Today, we're saying dressed, but you can ask for touch anywhere. Or it may be, you're welcome to be as clothed or as naked as you like. Um, I'm staying clothed. So th those kind of boundaries can be helpful at, up front because now they can relax about asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So my so yes, I have boundaries. Today I'm gonna keep my clothes on because you know the camera's gone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, and you can ask for anything that you want, and I will say no if I'm a no. Yeah. I want, or I'm ordering. Uh, yes. Put put your hands. Put your palms on my palms going with the way that my hands, like not upside down, but mm -hmm. exactly mirror image mm -hmm. against my palms. Okay. So, do you notice how that was harder to give the command? It was hard to explain because oh. I want to show you, uh -huh. but uh, I like it. forcing the command, yeah. forcing myself to figure out yeah. how to say it. Okay. Like that? I uh, press down harder. Move your palms up halfway up my palms uh, on going the other way and press harder, harder. So it, it's interesting playing with different ways to have her convey what she wants. Um, may or will you uh, is a really important one. Um, sometimes I will you is easy, but I want is difficult. Or sometimes it's the other way around. Um, sometimes saying anything at all is a huge step, and that may be as far as you want to go that day. So it really varies by the person. Um, eventually, over time, and you may do this half a dozen times with a person, you know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes at each session, um, but eventually you want to get to where they can just give a command. Uh, and that it, it it's, uh, yeah, it just stretches our ability to notice that I am in fact in charge of how I'm being touched here. One time I had a person who, uh, he was okay asking, will you do this? And I said, well, let's try it and see what happens. And he goes, okay, put your hands on my knees. Okay, do this, do this. And I was like, whoa. And I said, it's interesting that command brought this big thing. He said, yeah, I, I know how to give a command. And I said, what would happen? How would it be different? If you actually had complete confidence that you could have just what you wanted. And he burst into tears. Mm. So, oh my God, I, I didn't know that. I thought I had to demand or else it wasn't going to happen. I said, so experiment with a, a gentle statement. See what happens when you change your voice. And that was a huge aha for him. Like, that made him notice that, oh, it's actually possible. It's a big aha. It was kind of fun. Yeah, so different ways of asking, different ways of using your voice are just going to bring up different mixes of how you feel about things. And our job is not to analyze that. No. So give me one more command and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Put your hands on my knees. Put your hands right above my knees. Ladder, ladder horizontally. Okay. Like that. S squeeze. Squeeze with your fingers more, squeeze like a clank, coming okay. together. Okay. Yeah. Like that? Like that. Like, this one is good, this one is different than that one. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody, so she was very specific, sometimes people will be 
not so clear like, okay, rub my leg. You need to find out which leg and what kind of rubbing and if they want it from the top up, the, the wait, from the bottom up or the top down. So with that, so, would you, like let's say she's head rub my leg, how would you guide her in that articulation? Okay, so do you want can me to do that? One? Yeah. Yeah. Touch my leg. Now that's not really very much information, is it? But as a practitioner, if I just said, okay, and I started doing stuff, no telling if that's what she actually wants. And since this is an exercise in her learning how to ask what she wants, we're going to really get that clear. So I'd be happy to touch your leg. What kind of touch would you like and where would you like me to start? Well, just touch my, just touch my lower leg, okay, the so lower one on, both, just touch both my lower legs. Okay. And would you like that? maybe squeezy or light caresses or tickles or poking or massagey. They, they may not have this kind of vocabulary. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit of coaching can be helpful. I, I want you to explore. I, I want you to explore my legs. Explore your legs. And I forgot, did you tell me both or one? Um, I want you to explore both. Both my lower legs. Okay. Okay. Where are they? Here we go. Now I don't think I would go with that word explore. I would not go with I that. I normally am because if this is an exercise, what is exploration for you? I get that a lot from clients. Like, kid, I want you to explore. I'm like, what does that mean? Well, okay. so what, in your opinion, if that's a thing. Well, that's that, a yeah, that's a judgment call. To me, it means do what you want on her leg. Well, explore to me means feeling around for the shape and what the shapes are. That makes perfect sense to me. But you're probably right. It'd probably be better to ask for like, what, is ex what, what does explore mean? Yeah. Or to say, when you say explore, what I think is move my hands around in an unpredictable way to feel the shape. Is that what you mean? Yes. You, you guys are good. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then I'll do that. Yeah, explore wouldn't cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So does that help? Yes. Cool. Okay. Thank you. You are very welcome and thanks for helping us. So that makes sense? Questions? What's the purpose of the Boston Massage? To, to help the client get clear on how to ask for what they need yes. and to help them understand they are 100% a choice. Bingo. Mm -hmm. And what's your opportunity to learn as the server? How to be at peace. <laughs> Lots of stuff. And this is obviously for them about the accepting quadrant. Yeah. And it's even bigger than that. It's about the done to half of the experience, of any experience. So they're, what they're learning here is that they have a choice about how they're touched. They're learning the skills to exercise that choice. And they're learning to trust themselves. And that's going to support anything else that's, that's happening. And um, not everyone is going to go through all four quadrants. It, it depends. Yeah. Um, but at any rate, this is a I, this was will most likely happen in the first few sessions because it's a foundational piece. So part of that is that you're also making sure people go slow enough. If someone's rushing from one thing, okay, now do this. Okay, now do this. Okay, now do this. You're going to have them slow down and give at least 20 seconds or so before they ask for the next thing. Essentially what we're doing is all the ways that we have to avoid the discomfort of asking for what we want, we're just basically not letting them do any of those things. And so that leaves nowhere to go except learning how to ask for what we want. So. Um, some of the ways that we might avoid that is we go too fast, we rush right over it, or we hint, or we, um, we don't trust ourselves, or we second guess the other person, or we hedge our bets. We're just not letting them do any of that. And so um, slowing down is, is part of that. Because I remember being in the position of, like, I want to, you know, oh, I bet they really like this, or like, you know, I feel like I need to do something. And then I had that same moment of, Wow, I'd be taking away this wonderful learn. I'd be mm -hmm. taking a learning opportunity away from them. Mm -hmm. I'd be taking away this lesson. 
Yeah. Or to rescue them from their own discomfort and vulnerability. And that's where well, the learning is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we need is not to be rescued from our discomfort, it's for someone to stay mm -hmm. with us in our discomfort. It's and just, again, this okay. is the context of this is in a coaching learning situation where that's what they're there for and you've already had that conversation and they are there to learn and grow and heal. If someone comes in for an erotic massage, they don't want this. Like, it's kind of rude. So, it, it's yeah. what is your agreement about the purpose of your sessions and this session in particular? And that, of course, makes all the difference in whatever you do. So, some variations on this theme. One is that um, once they get good at it, which may be the first time, maybe after several times, you can start to expand the time. You can say, okay, um, now we're going to shift gears. I'll do what you asked me to do until, I'll just keep doing it until you tell me to stop or change. So that could be kind of fun. Yeah, you can gradually expand it. I think it's more effective for them to decide what their homework is. Because they know what's going to be useful based on what they've just learned. So you, I would be more inclined to ask, what did you learn? What did you notice about yourself? Which I ask all the time. What did you notice? What did you notice? What did you notice? What did you notice in this exercise? Well, I noticed that, boy, I really have trouble, or um, whatever. And then you could, if you wanted, ask, are there things that you could do over the coming week to, to support that for yourself? And they'll think of something. Mm -mm. Yeah. It's yeah. so amazing to be done to on a total choice. Yeah. On a total empowerment. Yeah. This takes that paradigm of touches something that has happens to me and I have to sort of deal with it. Just turns that completely upside down. So what I have noticed is that it's useful for short times, but if you do it for 20 minutes or so, there's a kind of whoop sinking in somehow that happens that you sort of get it more. So I recommend at least 20 minutes and um, and a number of times over a period of time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Want to play?